What was important for you in the film to put your stamp on it, but you also wanted to bring in some elements from the first From film. the first Creed? Mm -hmm. um, well, that's a great question, because I, I like the first Creed a lot. So mm -hmm. I think with with that particular film, there was moments that I connected to. Uh, one, uh, a black kid who was an athlete who ended up going to school. He's so he's somewhat educated, but yet he had a rough background. I was like, oh damn, that sounds like me. Mm -hmm. And so I connected with that character um, instantly. And so when coming to Creed II, I was like, how do we elevate that? And, and how do we grow from there, sorry. And, and I think that that's where I kind of came in, like what else in my life started to happen? Fiance, engagement, like trying to be, become mature ultimately. And so we just talked about those themes and I think uh, when me and Mike spoke and then even Tessa, the relationship aspect is something that I really kind of just drew to. You know, it was a point in my life where I wanted to tap into it and so um, I grew there, uh, showcased that in the film, and then also the fighting stuff, obviously. It was an opportunity to show sports differently, or this sport specifically, um, by showing, you know, two sides of the coin, both corners, the emotions going on in both corners. I haven't seen that yet, and I just want to really, you know, dive into it. I felt like that was a different perspective as well. I'm glad you said that, because I was going to mention there were some really beautiful touches that you added in there, like when we saw Tessa with the knit hat, it was kind of like a nod yeah. to the first. Mm -hmm. What were some touches? But then it was also the hair wrap. Yeah. That was like a new thing that I know everybody in my family does. So I was like, I, I want to see this on a $50 million movie that's going to be spread across the world <laughs> as a black girl to hair wrap. I think that was I, cool. As a black woman, I appreciate that. that <laughs> no doubt. What, what are some touches that might escape the eye that you purposely put in to kind of give a nod to your life, the yeah. past movie that mm -hmm. made it uh, into for Creed, For Creed 1, I think uh, there's a shot in there where Ryan got that he was above them looking down and they, had, they shared their first kiss in their apartment. Mm -hmm. I love that moment in the film. I thought I felt it was real. It was like cut in a way that was like very indie, I guess, mm -hmm. so to speak. And so in this one, we did the same thing because uh, I wanted people to feel that same feeling, but he's on the ground with his loved ones. You know, they're no longer alone. Uh, for myself, the engagement scene, you know, you plan an engagement scene, but yet you think you're about to go on one knee and she's about to say yes and it's that easy. Uh, mine's as choppy as theirs on this film. <laughs> so I just like, what could go wrong? Everything that could go wrong, we should do kind of thing, you know, and played with it. And a lot of it was improv, but like every moment at the door, like, you for real, you serious? All that while dude's trying to give his speech was my same scenario. Um, and so that felt like it was a piece of me on screen. And then if people see the scene, like I'll be, excited that they're also witnessing something that I may have experienced um, and I feel like it's pretty relatable. You have some great intimate moments and they're very subtle whether yeah. it's just handing someone something or just the way they look at each other. When you were mm -hmm. giving them instruction before filming did you have a mantra that you gave to the actors every day before you began work? Yeah all, all the time I mean I think in general I try to tell a film or a story without any words you know what I mean? I did it a lot in my previous work. Um, sometimes I'll play a scene and tell the actors to play the scene without no words, but they'll have to act as if they are given the lines and you get a lot of reactions out of that. You know what I mean? If you tell an actor to do a scene without any dialogue, it's like, how do you do that? You're miming it and moving around and you have one take that's just solely reactions so you can steal from that at any moment. Um, but I think with these guys, uh, Mike and Tess are pros. You know what I mean? So we just found those moments during improv -ing. And then with uh, the Dragos, uh, it was a little different. I had to pull from personal places with Florian because he's never acted before. Mm. You know, so we had to pretend as if the scene was something totally different. So whatever you see in his eyes, it's a glitter of hope. He probably wasn't even thinking about this scene. He probably was thinking about something else that was personal in his life. Um, so that helped. 